18 to 20K seem to be a pretty good bottom for Bitcoin. And we can see this not just in this chart, we can see this in many charts provided by the Glassnode Insights newsletter. So Glassnode brings out a new newsletter every single week describing different data around transactions of Bitcoin which we can then put into perspective, right? We can interpret this data. This is what this video will be doing. Now we are starting off with the entity adjusted unspent realized price distribution. Now, what is this? This is quite a mouthful. This is looking at denominated in Bitcoin at what kind of price did a Bitcoin move the last time? And the color coding here shows at the time as in the holding period. So did the Bitcoin move in the last day or in the last week? Then it's in red or did it move maybe in the last few months? Then it's in yellow. Or are we looking at long-term Bitcoin as in several years of holding period? Then it's in green, blue or purple over here. Now, what's interesting around this chart is that the recent movements around 18 to 20K have been pretty significant, right? This is quite a wall here. So 20K is really the new reference price for a lot of coins. So is then 30 to 40K, but there's a lot of action happening around 20K. And why does the reference price matter so much? It's because everybody, whenever they buy any asset, looks at the profit and loss relative to their entry price. And so what very often happens is, when we've got a well-established reference price where a lot of coins moved, once we move significantly above or below this, we very often get a crash or a sudden move to the upside, right? So a reference price gets established and a small move to either side gets magnified. This is likely going to happen with the 18 to 20K range as well. If we do fall below 18K, then there doesn't seem to be too much room to stop us from falling to maybe 12K or so. But the same is true the other way around, right? If we go to maybe 24 or 25K, we can easily go to 30K afterwards. So the reference price really, it's now 18 to 20, maybe 21K. This is where a lot of the recently moved Bitcoin has established the reference price. Now, another interesting way to look at the data is the Maya multiple. Now, this is not an on-chain metric. This is actually an indicator derived simply just from the price data. What is the Maya multiple? It's the 200 day moving average times a certain multiple. So in this case, it's 0.45 times a 200 day moving average. That's this blue line. And we can see historically the price fell below that blue line. This was a very good bottom indicator, right? The bottom for Mount Gox, the bottom after the 2018 crash, the Corona bottom. And now again, we see price being below that Maya multiple. So interesting, right? Different models come to different predictions. Some models already see us bottoming here. We're going to look at the realized price as well. Another kind of bottom indicator that's currently flashing green. This Maya multiple also tends to indicate that we have already seen the bottom. Not all models agree, but that's why we look at different kinds of models. Now you need to know on-chain analytics a little bit in order to understand this here. This is the long-term holder spent output profit ratio, okay, monthly and yearly. So this is looking at the long-term holders. It looks at their profitability and it looks at if those long-term holders, they move their coin. So long-term holders for Glassnode is a wallet that held Bitcoin for at least 155 days. That's their cutoff. If they realize their profit, how are they actually doing? And since this is fluctuating quite a bit, they're using moving averages over that metric. So the more recent data is this 30 day moving average and the more smooth and out data is the one year moving average. We can see the 30 day moving average, it bottomed around here, right? The long-term holders may be at roughly 0.5. So they lost half of their investment during the final capitulation of 2018. We are pretty close to that. Not yet at the exact level, but pretty close. So the long-term holders are realizing losses. The people that held for at least 155 days. The bear market isn't that significant though compared to 2018 yet, right? 2018 saw us going 
down by 84%, I believe it was. Currently, we are only at 70%. And nowadays, the long-term holders are also not panicking that quickly anymore. So some people do believe that Bitcoin will eventually recover, meaning there is a bit of a buffer now. It's an interesting metric to try to distill bull markets from bear markets, but I think it's a little bit laggy, right? They've already come down quite a bit in Bitcoin until this was bearish. You've also already come up quite a bit until this turned bullish. So it's not necessarily my favorite metric, but still nevertheless interesting to look at. You can also take moving averages just from the price, right? This was the moving average of the long-term holder profitability. This is the moving average of the price. And we've got three different ones over here. One that's being watched quite a lot is the 200 week moving average. I like this moving average also quite a bit because it used to be a pretty good floor for Bitcoin. We can see this over here and look into Bitcoin. This is not a glass note chart, but still it shows us the 200 week moving average was a pretty good bottom after the Mount Gox Silk Road crash, pretty good bottom after the 2018 crypto winter was also a good bottom for the corona crash and now again we are at that bottom. So I like this one. I don't like that much the 200 day moving average and the 111 day moving average. They're kind of arbitrary. The 111 day is used because it's related to the pi cycle top indicator but still I like to use moving averages that are back tested. So if you're interested in what kind of moving averages work the best historically you might consider checking out the premium membership, thebitcoinstrad.com. I've backtested moving averages for a lot of different assets and we are discussing the current state of the market based on those moving averages. So feel free to check that out, thebitcoinstrad.com. Now let's continue with the market value to realized value Z-score. So this is looking at the realized value. So in aggregate, at what kind of price did Bitcoin move the last time? And then it puts this into perspective of the four year rolling variance or volatility. That's then where we get this green indicator and we, we can see when this bottoms, this was also a pretty good indication of market cycle bottoms. Another metric that shows us that we might have already bottomed. So if you're currently 100% in cash, that's probably not a good risk versus reward. Of course, nobody can say for certain that we have seen the bottom, right? But there is now quite a bit of a reference price wall and there are now quite a few models that tend to indicate that we are now historically quite low. And so let's look at that realized price and let's actually distinguish this between long-term holders and short-term holders. So all of holders is in orange over here, right? The realized price. And this is getting pretty close to the long-term holders, the ones for 155 days. And the price is getting above both of those reference lines. The short-term holders, of course, are continuing to make losses with the recent decline. We want to zoom out here though. So let's just look again at the long-term realized price. And let's see what happened historically. When the Bitcoin price was below the realized price, the long-term holder and aggregate realized price, we did have a pretty good buying opportunity. What's colored here in purple is the time when the aggregate realized price had even been below the long-term realized price. This is what we currently see. So far, we are 17 days in that state. So the bear markets had different kinds of durations, or let's rather say those accumulation zones. When we entered that crossing, it took two days until we saw the bottom. When we entered that state after the Mount Gox crash, it was 100, no, it was 77 days only, right? So this is not 77 days as in the purple area. It's just from the start of the purple area to the bottom. And when we look at the bear market in 2018, from the start of this flippening to the bottoming of the price, it was 68 days. So currently we are at 17 days, indicating that if history just repeats itself, we should be seeing a bottom maybe in roughly two months. But of course, we have seen two days before, right? So we just started the purple area and directly afterwards we saw the bottom. History doesn't necessarily repeat itself, it only rhymes. It's very hard to time the exact bottom, but it's not so hard to tell that currently, in historical context, we are pretty cheap in Bitcoin. 
Now, if you could give this video a like to help the channel grow, that would be very much appreciated. And in case you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to do so as well. There's also a Telegram group. Simply search for Bitcoin Strategy Channel within the Telegram app. And of course, as already mentioned, that's the premium membership. You get direct access to my knowledge. You can simply ask me any questions here. You get daily market updates, videos on how I see currently Bitcoin and of course various altcoins. That's the link here. It's also in the video description. There's a similar market analysis from last week. Hope to see you in that video. Feel free to check it out. And of course, thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.